Hello everyone and a really warm welcome to another Courageous Conversation, the first one of 2019. My name is Pollyanna Darling and I look after community engagement and strategy for Tree Sisters. And I'm really thrilled to be speaking today with Lauren Hills, who is a Tree Sisters volunteer and she looks after our Instagram and she's many other things beside. So these Courageous Conversations are all about bringing the voices and courage and wisdom of women forward. And yeah, hopefully Lauren will join us really soon. And in the meantime, I'm going to read you her bio that she sent us. So this is in her own words. Lauren dances in the still point on the spiral journey of life. She loves nature photography and writes when the spirit moves her. Not particularly unique, she's been a daughter, sister and friend, a wife and mother, social worker and therapist. Now she's in her third age, retired and inspired to do something new. So as you are probably aware, if you've seen one of these Courageous Conversations before, we sometimes have tricksy little tech issues with, with doing this as they are live and it can sometimes be a bit difficult to get people on so I hope you will be patient while we try and get L Lauren on here live. Um, it's a pretty courageous thing to do to come on here and and go live in front of a potentially enormous audience so I really honour anyone who steps forward to do this. I'm going to have a look and see if I can see Lauren. Hang on one second. Aha. Uh -huh. I can see that you're watching, Lauren, if you can uh, make the request to join us. <laughs> that would be really awesome. Hi, Charmaine. Hi, Ruthie. Hi, Maggie. Got lots of really awesome women joining us here and watching. So I know you're there, Lauren. If you can just make the request, I might see if I can do it. Hang on. Oh, it's disappeared. Uh, no, I can't add you. Okay. You should be able to make that request now, Lauren. So I'll tell you a little about the tree that's behind me while, while we wait. This is a poinciana tree. It's not actually native to Australia. I think it's an African tree. And this is a really beautiful old one. Yay, Lauren's made a request. Uh, let me say yes. Okay. So we should have Lauren really soon. So this tree is sort of like uh, the guardian of our house and provides really beautiful shade and we have birds nesting in it. And uh, yeah, it's a lovely, it, it's come here to be a part of this courageous conversation today. So apparently, Lauren is adding. We're nearly there. We're so close. Don't abandon us now. <laughs> adding, adding. Almost there. Stay with me. This is always, this is always the... Uh, the trickiest bit of this call is waiting to see if we can actually, if we can actually have the guest um, and keep them. So, oh, okay. So Lauren, I think you can still see me. You need to make another request. I, I, I approved you to come on, but um, apparently you didn't answer. Uh, so, um, yeah, and if everyone can be patient, we will, we will get there. One day, this is just gonna, this is just gonna happen with glorious ease. That's my vision. With the same kind of glorious ease that we'll all just re-robe the planet in beautiful green and bring it back to thriving. 
Oh, it's connecting. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I made it. I have you. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> Sorry okay, about yeah. that. It just wasn't cooperating. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you so much for joining us and for finding the courage to join us and for braving the tech, which is always really... I don't understand. Thing. Yeah. Uh, Facebook. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm let's, here. Um, let's get started. Yeah, with um, the really important question, which is why are you a tree sister? Why? Well, um, some time ago, I saw that women on fire video that Claire did. And I was just enthralled by her story and by the message of tree sisters. Um, and I started listening into the, the meditations with Ed Beige and Claire that they did at the new moon and the full moon. And I just felt like I had come home and found my people, you know, um, the, the love of nature, the trees, and then also, um, the idea of feminine nature-based leadership just really excited me. You know, I feel like we need to balance out the patriarchy with more feminine energy. And so um, during one of the campaigns, I joined the Heartwood team. And then Sophie talked me into taking over Instagram. And that was about two and a half years ago. So I've been pretty active since then. Yeah. So um, I know that you've grown our Instagram from a very small following to some huge, fo you know, much bigger like following it's that we have now. over um, 8,200 right now. Cool. And did you have a sort of social media or tech background when you volunteered to do that? Um, a little bit just self-taught. I was... Um, experimenting with online business ideas and I thought I would be a life coach or and um, so I was on social media learning about it and experimenting with it but really I was on Instagram because I like to take pictures and there were really pretty pictures on Instagram <laughs> and I thought <laughs> um, the artwork that Tree Sisters artists have you know, offered up and, and given freely. Uh, it's just so beautiful. And I told Sophie, why this is a perfect platform for all the artwork. Why isn't there a presence here? And she said, do you want to do it? <laughs> like, well, I didn't mean that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing that you've grown it so much and it's, it, it always looks so beautiful. The, um, and for those people who are watching and don't know what Heartwood is, we have a, amazing glorious team of volunteers who do all manner of different things um contributing to tree sisters and our mission and so um yeah lauren is part of that heartwood team and um i'm curious what what is it that being a part of tree sisters has given you it's given me hope on really dark days um as we know, the state of the earth and the climate is pretty treacherous right now. And um, sometimes I'm really overwhelmed by feeling um, sad about all of that. And yet, when knowing that there's a group of women who also love the planet and the trees and all of it, um, working together to try to, to mitigate some of what's happening, it just... It, it just makes me feel better, you know, and um, I've made some really good friends. I, I found some heart minded people that we just communicate on a level that, you know, I don't always find in my community. And so that's been really good, too. Yeah. Yeah. You get to talk really to beautiful. people like you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, I'm really curious uh, about, I'd really love to talk to you because I know that you were a member of our Elderberries community and mm -hmm. um, looking at the role of um, our elders in protecting the planet. And I'd love it if you could speak to that a little. Well, 
I started to get older like we do if we're lucky enough to stay alive and um, thinking about, um, you know, what kind of legacy did I want to leave behind? And it's, it's a very strange place to be in at this stage of my life right now, because it doesn't seem like it was that long ago that I was running around after my kids and, you know, doing things a mile a minute and it's slowed down quite a bit. And because of that, um, I start, I just started thinking about things differently. And I, it seems like in other cultures that elder people are respected for their wisdom you know, and I feel like I have a lot of life experience and knowledge that I've learned, you know, through the school of hard knocks and through reading and writing and all of that, you know, introspection stuff. But um, it just seems like the elder people are the ones who have that wisdom and also know how to work the system you know, and have resources and time. <laughs> so I thought it just seems like a good role to take care of the earth. Um, I don't have any grandchildren yet, but um, there, I have children and I worry about the future, their future. And if they do decide to have kids or, you know, my friends, children, I, people are having babies and I worry about what kind of planet are we bringing them into and they can't they're helpless children are helpless i'm not i have you know those resources and that knowledge at my fingertips and we have the internet which is phenomenal you know barbara marks hubbard was talking about we were evolving into a new species just because of the internet and our ability to communicate mm -hmm. globally and that's one of the things i love about tree sisters i mean here we are, you're in Australia and I'm in Wyoming and we're talking, you know, it just blows me <laughs> away every time. I never get bored of that. <laughs> but um, yeah, 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 I feel like I want to give something back. I want to take care of the planet. I want to do what I can, however small, to help make things better. Yeah, and I, I really... Um... The comment you just made about uh, elders having resources and time and um, and also some of the savvy around you know how to work the system and all that that's really landed with me as as um, you know it demonstrates the power that older people actually have if they choose to use it mm -hmm. and I'm interested in um, how you yourself have been applying that and and uh, what you might have to say to other older women who maybe, you know, need a bit of encouragement to get stuck into yeah. participating. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, I spent some of my working years as a community organizer. And um, I feel like those are the skills that are, are most needed now only my community it's the planet not just where I live um, and the way that you develop that is by talking to people and um, getting them to you know join in and, and feel fired up about what you're doing um, and then volunteering or whatever working together to meet your goal whatever that is you know and Tree Sisters, of course, has the twin tree, the two goals of one, to reforest the tropics as soon as possible to cool the planet, which I think is really important, um, the out-breath kind of thing. And then there's the in-breath, the feminine um, spirit of all of it. And I think as older women, especially the older and older we get, the more isolated we become, you know, and if... Like, I'm really glad I'm not afraid of technology or the internet or getting online or putting myself out there because that's how I meet people. And I know that there are women who they'll say, oh, you know, I'm not going to get on Facebook, I, you know, or I'm not going to, I don't, I don't know how to do email or, 
whatever, and they're missing out on something, you know, they're missing out on communicating with other people. So I think that there's no reason to be afraid of technology. It's not bad inherently. It's not good inherently. It's what you do with it. And because we have it, why not use it, you know, to talk to other people around the world and like-minded people who want the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. And I'm, cu I'm curious also, you know, there's, I know in the circles of the divine feminine and where people talk about that kind of thing, there's a lot of talk about crone wisdom. And I'm wondering what you feel about the sort of what the uniqueness is of crone wisdom that we can bring to serving our planet. Um, in some of my readings, I came across the idea that women who are postmenopausal are wise because they keep their wise blood within. You know, we don't shed blood anymore. And so that wisdom is internal. And because of that, we may be more insular than you are at a, like the mothering stage or the maiden stage. But it's also, um, I feel more connected to life. Like, because I don't have my own cycle anymore, I'm more in tune with the lunar cycles and the seasons and the solar cycles and each round that's why you know, dancing in the still point on the spiral journey is every time I go around, I feel this deepening relationship with the earth. And I think that comes with that slowing down a little bit, having enough time to actually stop and listen and look around where, you know, when you're running 90 miles an hour, trying to take care of everybody, there's not as much time. And it's now I, I, <laughs> I just remember what that was like so much. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, like there's days that my daughter says, I wish I had your life, you know, because <laughs> she's working full time and married and trying to run a household and both of my daughters are. And, and so, you know, I can sit and look out the window. I, I put up bird feeders and I watch the birds eating at the bird feeders and I get great joy from that. You know, and it's like simplified. Things are simplified. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Um, and I'm right there too. I'm right there in running around after four kids and working mm -hmm. pretty much full time and just wishing, you know, for a window where I have the spaciousness to connect in a, you know, like, I mean, I can make time in my day and I do to go and connect with nature, right. but there's always a limit on it. You know, mm -hmm. someone needs something or I have to go somewhere. There's <laughs> Ma! <that sense> of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when you're, t and, you know, I have heard other um, elder women talk about this and it makes me really look forward to post-menopause, mm -hmm. whereas our mm -hmm. culture actually you know, our culture puts the fear into women around menopause, right. you know, that after menopause, right. it's this terrible thing. And, you know, whereas part of the joy, you know, one, I mean, there's many joys for me in Tree Sisters, but one of them is that I have actually developed through knowing all these amazing women uh, are looking forward to um, that part of my life. And that's really exciting. Yeah, well, it is. And I, yeah. I, you know, I want to be one of the ones that say, hey, it's not that bad. You know, yeah, my knees hurt, <laughs> but it's not, it's not the, the dreaded thing that everybody is sort of fed, that it's, it's something awful that happens to you. It's actually something really good. And, it, you know, now we, as women, probably have 20 years more of lifespan than what, you know, is that a bird? Yes, there are mag I have a lot of magpies oh. here, and the babies are here drinking. Oh, <laughs> so you can okay. hear them. <laughs> it's a different kind of mum. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, part of, you know, when you ask me what would I like to do is, like, tell women your age that, you know what, it gets better. You're not 
you, when you're in the middle of it, you think it's never going to end. It feels eternal. And then you blink and they're gone and it's quiet. And it's like, what do I do now? Well, there's plenty to do, you know, um, but it doesn't have to be done at a breakneck speed. Yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> and, it is. As you know, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just thinking about the fact that, you know, you take, you took on our Instagram and you've grown, grown it massively. And, you know, that, that's amazing to me that you can, cause it, it always seems like tech is something for younger people. And, mm -hmm. but here you are, you know, <laughs> in your, in your, in your third age, <laughs> growing third age. an Instagram following. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's a great yeah. way to stay engaged. It really is yeah so I think, um yeah you go oh I just think it is important to stay engaged you know um <laughs> so, sorry, dog. Now. Suddenly the dogs are, yeah yeah no I, I think it's probably a kangaroo in the paddock or something diesel it's a little sorry. bit still uncomfortable to be referred to as a crone or an elder woman you know it takes some time to adjust to that and I feel like I'm still growing into it and I talk to women who are like 75 and 85 and their experience of it is is much different than mine I'm a young crone I guess you could say um, but they are still engaged and still care about the the world and you can be you know, infirm and never leave your house and still communicate with the world. It, it's just amazing. Yeah, it is totally amazing. Like, I, I think we have only, you know, we're only just starting to scratch the surface of, of the kind of mobilization that we can achieve mm -hmm. using the internet, that, you know, mm -hmm. the kind of mass action that we can take, you know, um, and I think that that's coming faster than yeah. we imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. the Tree Sisters main Facebook page has, what, over 250,000 people, you know, on it. And I don't know how many yeah. are actively engaged. But just in the small amount of time that I've been involved, I've watched it grow. And I'm watching, um, you know, people with names showing interest like you know with milk um, and claire meeting at yeah. that conference it's like yeah we can start maybe connecting with people who have bigger platforms that believe in what we're doing and they can help us too and it's not that hard to make connections that way yeah yeah that's a really good point so i I'd like to swing the conversation around to courage a little bit. And um, I guess what you feel about where you've been courageous in your life and, um, and what that actually looks like for you. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, one of the things that I did when I was much younger, I was in my late 20s, um, was I started training in martial arts. And I grew up as a really uncoordinated child. I mean, I was the last kid to get picked for the team. I got teased mercilessly. I ran slower than everybody else. And I walked into this martial arts studio and they didn't think I would last two weeks. And I lasted five years. You know, and I, I struggled and sweated and fought for <laughs> through all of that. And it was, to me, an act of courage to stick with it, you know, to be physical. It was, and it was a real confidence booster um, to be able to do that. Uh, and then when I stopped working in social work, I took a risk online you know to start a business and I remember
it was back in the day where everybody saying, oh, you have to be so authentic, you know, and I was spilling my guts all over the place. And it, I thought that took a lot of courage, too. Now I don't want to do it so much. But, um, you know, putting myself out, out online <laughs> it's some, from thinking that the, you know, Internet was bad and there were stalkers and somebody was going to rob me to, oh, I can I can connect with people and make friends. And, you know, so I, I sort of I tend to swing from extreme to extreme. So I went all out there and then I came back and, um, you know, I finally decided that it was just too noisy out there. And uh, it's one of those things that I, I've struggled with recently because, you know, by all outward standards, I did not succeed. I did not succeed in a business effort and I didn't make money. I made a little bit of money, but not very much. I didn't make my six figures, you know, <laughs> all of that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it takes courage to fail and then to be able to talk about it. You know what? It just didn't work out. Um, and it's, I know it's not because I'm lacking in skills. Um, I have skills, but I just didn't really know how to market myself. And then I think by the time I tried to jump in, it might have been already a little too late. Um, but, oh, well, you know, it's, yeah, I think we need more people talking about failure. And the effort that was made, as opposed to the fact that there was no success, because really, what is success anyway? You know, yeah, yeah, I totally hear you on that. And I know, you know, in terms of I did that whole um, on the Internet coaching thing, you know, and there's a definite mm -hmm. push for certain certain outcomes um, that are just not for everybody. Right. So I love I love that, that it takes courage to fail. And I also love what you said about um, it takes courage to persist. You know what you said about the martial arts, because. I feel like that about our mission. So um, in terms of staying with the idea that we can create change and we can, uh, we can change the direction that humanity is going in and we can become a restorer species and we can uh, reforest the planet. When there's a stream of a lot of the opposite coming towards mm -hmm. you i think mm -hmm. it you know it can flatten you really and it does take courage to to stand and say yes this is happening and this is happening and that awful thing's happening but we can still do this um it takes real courage to do that and um and if we fail okay we failed but we tried right um, and i i think those are those are really important things to remember um and it you know it's almost i <laughs> there's a part of me that feels like it's a rebellious act these days to to not fall you know to not fall into despair and to actually stay with the vision that we are walking towards and it and is bring totally more people rebellious. in and bring more people in like you say mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah it is yeah and you know to have a model of an organization doing feminine nature-based leadership. I mean, sometimes Tree Sisters is all over the place. And I think, what the hell are they doing, you know? And then at the same time, I think, well, nobody knows what they're doing, but we're all saying it's okay if we don't know what we're doing. We're trying something new. And anytime you try yeah. something new, it's hard and it's uncomfortable and it doesn't go smoothly and, you know, um, but that's part of the process. It's just part of the, the process and the way things work. If, it, if we could do things easily and succeed right away, then I don't think we would even try. I mean, part of it really is in the trying. And I feel like I would rather yeah. die knowing I made the effort to do something. That was actually what pushed me, was like, can I allow myself to leave my life knowing that I didn't do anything to try to change this, that I just laid down and said, oh, yeah, we're going down. Oh, well, bye. You know, I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. <laughs> but there are days I want to. <laughs> yeah. 
it seems yeah. so bliss and dark sometimes, but it, you know, I, I believe in that whole co-creative idea and re- restoration. It's still possible. Might not look like yeah. what we think, but it's still possible. Yeah, and the more, I think the more people that get on board with something, the more the more we have the capacity to make that shift. And yeah, you're right. It may not it may not look the way we think it will look, mm-hmm. but it's the it's the combined energy of everybody coming together and saying yes, let's do this. That almost births a third thing, you know, like that co-creative thing of a something is born through that energy. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just just checking the time. I'm just conscious of the time. So, um, yeah, I've been really loving this conversation and the places that you've taken it to. And um, we probably need to wrap up shortly. But I would really love it if you, knowing that, you know, it takes all of us bringing our gifts and um, sharing our energy for for, to, to make this shift and to, to really become a restorer species. Do you have a final message for anyone out there <laughs> who hasn't yet joined us that you, that you would like to share? Please. <laughs> I was just reading today that we don't say please enough. Please join us. <laughs> please care about the planet. I, you know, sometimes I care so deeply that I can't, believe that everybody else just doesn't you know when people say oh I don't like camping it's like you don't like being outside (laughs) what but it's like get outside hug a tree I mean you know tune into the energy of nature and it it actually is nourishing you know and they're doing studies about how people their mental health is so much better if they get outside and kids need to get outside. We need, you know, I think if people could spend more time outside that they would feel kind of what we're talking about. You know, I just take it for granted because I live in a wild place and I can access mountains and and animals easily, but I forget that people live in cities and they don't, you know, their trees are surrounded by concrete sidewalks and, They have to go to a park. But even if you have to go to the park and just sit, you know, with your back up against a tree and feel that energy, calm down and feel the energy, it might inspire you to want to do something to save our planet because this really is the only planet we have right now. Uh, I'm not going to go to Mars, (laughs) you know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I'm not going to Mars either. Um, <laughs> I don't fancy that. So <laughs> thank you so much, Lauren. Well, thank you, Pollyanna. Us and for, yeah, for sharing your yeah. voice and your wisdom. And um, yeah, I feel really inspired by many of the things that you said. And as Lauren said, do join us. There is a link in the post above where you can go and check out Tree Sisters if you don't know about us. And there's a there's a place where you can donate for the trees, which will be fabulous. We're doing some really beautiful, amazing planting projects throughout the tropics. And uh, next week, Samuel will be back with another courageous conversation. And we'd really love you to join us for that. And for now, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.